There were definitely four signs that I saw in my son that let me know, hey, just more than a picky eater. I remember my mother-in-law telling me, he's going to eat when he's hungry, don't worry. Well, I knew deep down in my heart that he wasn't going to eat when he's hungry. I'm going to walk you through what those four signs are from my own experience and that might help you get to recognize some signs in your children. And these signs are signs of sensory processing needs. So sensory needs are the things that we feel with our senses that go to our nervous system through our senses. If they feel unbearable or if they feel underwhelming, then the child either seeks or, or avoids that sensation and that happens a lot with food. But what's the difference between just a regular picky eater like my other son and my son that has sensory needs? That's why I'm going to talk on this video, these four signs. But before we go there, hello, my name is Marcela Collier. I'm a certified parenting coach and head coach of HIC Parenting Education Agency. Our mission is to help parents break free from frustration, from angry reactions and overwhelm, bring peace to their parenting so they can become secure parents and raise emotionally healthy children. If you are interested in becoming a secure parent, then this is the place for you. Number one, avoiding certain smells and textures. So with my more than picky eater, I noticed that when, I, when I'm cooking, he starts commenting on getting really bothered about the smell of the food. Oh, it smells so stinky. If maybe if I'm cooking onions or even beans, uh, sometimes I, I had to stop putting the crack pack overnight because he wakes up in the middle of the night to let us know that he cannot sleep because he's too stinky. My regular picky eater doesn't do that. He might refuse to eat some foods, but he doesn't get that kind of anxiety when he smells certain foods or when he senses uh, and the textures of certain foods. So when you have a sensory needs kiddo who gets really frustrated when he smells or she smells food or the texture of food or even sensing the food in the hands, then that's more than a picky eater. Yesterday, we had an amazing event with our NeuroComplex coach where she guide parents with children with sensory needs in having a, an easier routine with them because these children, they, they may throw food, they have big meltdowns, uh, they may have their anxiety may lead them to maybe reject food or even uh, getting dressed, like the, the hygiene could be impossible. And she walked us through how to make daily routine a lot easier. The event was yesterday, but you can grab the replay for just $17 and you're going to see her guiding other parents directly on how to make daily routine a lot smoother with your sensory kids. You can go to hicparenting.com or go to the description and it's there. Emily Chi is a mom of a sensory kiddo, and, and this is what she said after the event. Thank you so much. That was a really interesting workshop. It's definitely made me think and helped me understand my son's reactions better and made me more keen to be empathetic and figure out ways to meet his underlying needs. The coaching at the end was also very insightful and really helpful to think about how to respond to my son. I'm glad I signed up. Sign number two, they might get stuck on younger behavior at meal time. So for example, my son, he's eight years old and he prefers finger foods. He can use silverware, but he prefers when I, we serve them finger foods. And when he was younger for a long time, he was in, in baby puree kind of food. So he, he ate solids, but it was easier to get uh, him to eat more vegetables or, or a variety of foods if it was in baby food version. Yeah. Number three, extreme reactions to certain foods. I would never forget the first time that I gave my twin solids. I remember the first solid that I gave them was a carrot puree. 
Well, my normal picky eater or my regular picky eater, he I gave him a little bite of the puree. He kind of like uh, did like uh, he like he didn't like it. He spit it out. But my older one, my more than just picky eater child, he took a bite and he it was so overbearing for him that he threw up. So those kind of reactions. Now he doesn't throw up, but he like. I can tell is really overbearing for him when he puts something in his mouth that he doesn't like. It's hard for him to say, mm, I, don't, I don't think I, I, li I like this. I'm not going to eat this. He's going to potentially end up in a meltdown. And number four, having a very, very, very restrictive diet. So I sometimes I joke and I say that my son is vegetarian because he doesn't eat meat. But he cannot be vegetarian if he doesn't like vegetables. So I was able to expand his window of tolerance when it comes to food. And now he does eat some vegetables, not a full variety like his, his twin, but of course not concerning that he's not getting any vegetables in. So understanding their sensory needs, it's a must when you have a child who struggles with sensory needs. And the last thing, remember that every behavior communicates a need. If your sensory kiddo is throwing food or having a, a meltdown at the dinner table or getting off the table frequently, it's not that he is ungrateful, not wanting to eat your food, or he's giving you a hard time. They're really having a hard time with the textures, with the smells, with how the food feels in their mouth. So every behavior communicates a need. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Let me know in the comments which things do your children do that makes you think, hey, they may have sensory needs. Remember, it only takes understanding of yourself and of your children's needs to transform your parenting. That's parenting with understanding. That's what we teach and believe here in HIC Parenting. I'll see you next time. Bye.